you know, what happened to the legalists trying to uh, convince me that it's a works-based salvation? What happened to them? Well, every argument that they came up with, I refuted it. That's what happened to them. You know, what's weird is the legalists tried to pull you into their <clears throat> works-based salvation. And then when they couldn't figure it out, then they, then they, the devil sent the, uh, the Wiccans and the Warlocks and the, the New Age people. Which is still just works, you know. The Wiccans would say, oh, it's not a workspace. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. So you... Uh, in other words, what I'm saying is the, the Wiccans would say, Our, we're not teaching a works-based salvation because we're wicked. <laughs> I mean, the word, what's, what blows your mind is the Wiccans, the word Wiccan goes back to wicked. The etymology of Wiccan goes back to wicked. They're wicked. And the word wicked goes back to evil. And they're proud of that. But they don't admit they're sinners. They don't admit they need to be saved. So what they say it's all about love, you know, but their idea of love, there's no truth in their love. Truth and love are married, but they don't have any truth mixed in with their love, you know. And it's agape love, because God is love. Only love comes from God. So they're trying to conjure up love without God, which is impossible. It's a fake love. It's not real. Exit 208. Some uh, pizza. I wonder if that's real. Anyway. So, they couldn't convince me of a works-based salvation. The Pentecostals, they sent Pentecostals my way. They sent Methodists my way. You know, Methodists are traditionalists, you know. They sent legalistic Baptists. Not all of them are legalistic, but, you know... All these legalistic uh, versions. There's different. There's different versions of legalism, but they're all legalism. Just like Jezebel. Jezebel's legalism. The flesh is legalism. The energy of the flesh. You're trying to be good enough. You're trying to conjure it up. <laughs> it's a new heart by faith alone in Jesus alone. You know. I'm not stopping. I, I don't. Sometimes I don't even want to rub shoulders with these people, these lost, hell-bound sinners. I just used to get tired of smelling them. Just get tired of what, listening. To, they're dead. I mean, if you really pay attention, you're walking around with some dead creatures. They're walking around, but they're dead. They're dead in trespasses. Everything out of their mouth is death cult. It's sad. Anyway, so why'd they stop sending legalists my way? Why did they stop sending people my way to try to refute? Because of every argument, they have to, because they don't want to look in the mirror. They don't want to face off with themselves. How can you fight against faith alone in the finished work of Jesus? You can't. And when they say, well, it's faith plus works, well, for what? For salvation? To justify you? No, it's faith alone in Jesus alone. What about sanctification? Is Christ in you doing the sanctification? You're walking by faith. You're saved by faith. You walk by faith. What about glorification? What about glorification? Justification, sanctification, glorification. What about glorification? Is it your works or is it faith? It's faith. It's faith all the way to glory. It's faith from the natural to the spirit. It's faith. The whole walk is faith. Faith, truth, agape love, you can't force it. 
it has to be developed in you, birthed in you, grown in you by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does the work. Now, does He do the work unto in you for you to move towards good works? Yes. Can you deny? Yeah. Can you fight against it? Yeah. But you're still saved. You're still sons. You have eternal life. It's not temporal. How can eternal life be go? How can you lose something that's eternal? You can't. It's eternal. Eternal life. God made man in his image, but God had already planned for a redemptive storyline. And so everything around you is redemption. You know, I used to uh, have questions about some of the stuff that was said in the Bible, especially when Paul said stuff like, if a man don't work, he don't eat. And I used to think, well, what's the underlying truth of that? Why? If a man don't work, he don't eat. Okay, that's the truth. But what's the underlying truth? What's the what's the deeper truth? Nobody can answer. Even a preacher couldn't answer. Why? And even if you ask why, they would get they would think that was heresy just to ask why. No. Why would Paul say that? If a man don't work, he don't eat. Why would he say something like that? What's the underlying principle of that? Because no matter where you look, no matter where you look, it's a sacrificial redemptive system, created system, creation. It's a sacrificial redemptive creation that points back to what? The lamb slain before the foundation of the world. So if a man don't work, he don't eat, right? So what is, happens when you work? You sacrifice your time for some pay. You have an exchange and think about the exchange life. You sacrifice your sacrifice your time to make some money or some income. And then you use that income and you do an exchange. The exchange life. It's all pointing back to the transaction that happened at the cross when you put faith and trust in Jesus at the cross. The exchange life. When you put faith and trust in Jesus at the cross, it's called the exchange life. You you exchange. You take on His identity. Seated in the heavenlies in Christ. And you die. You die to self. You die to your own understanding. You die to your old ways, and and as you grow, and you say, you look back, and you say, praise God that I, I was, my ways were foolishness. My ways were vanity. My ways were ignorance. My ways were pride, and I didn't know anything. So when you die to your own ways, and you live, and you go through the exchange life experience, and it's God's will and God's ways. Then you get some wisdom from above. But your own ideas are... I don't even like to use the word hill of beans. I don't even know where I heard that from. But your own ideas are just vanity. It's, it's just nothing. A pile of dirt, really. But when you get the mind of Christ by getting saved, then you take on His mind, you take on His attributes, you take on His... Uh, you're actually a child of God, sons of God. So when you birth down here, your sons of a, your sons are daughters of a human. But when you get spirit filled, born again, you're sons of God, children of God, little gods. I'm not calling you a god, but I'm saying you're you have the spirit of God, so you're like a little god to the world because they don't have any truth and he told he told Israel that he said he said uh, to the world you're little gods why because they were hearing directly from God they were the elect called out ones you have the earnest of the spirit and so they had the word of God the truth and so the word of God as a church member and I'm not talking about a building I'm talking about the spiritual church as a as a 
as a son of God who's a member of the body of Christ, the church, then you are indwelled with the Word. You're indwelled with the Word. And so what does that mean? You know that the UFOs are the demons. You know the truth. You know everything everything that's going on around you. and Everybody's going crazy. You know there's going to be a rapture. You know there's going to be a 666. You know that the agenda is the machine man. You already know this because it says it in the Bible. You have the word. And all the data points point to the same thing. All the movies, all the TV shows, all the nursery rhymes, everything that they have thrown out from the eon of ages... <laughs> the eons of ages everything they throw out is to build up mankind that's why it's called a freemason the ma son the water and the blood creature they worship the, they worship man instead of worshiping god what is the ma son it's the son of the ma they worship material realm. They worship Mother Mary. They worship anything of the natural. They're trying to be spiritual through the natural, which is impossible. You can only be, you know. The, and so Lucifer will come down and give them, give these thirty-three degree and thirty-two degree people. Even before that, the Lucifer might give them some insight into the unseen realm, but it always takes them down a path of destruction you know the gematria people think oh we it's all about gematria we got all the well when you describe gematria do you describe it with words yeah well, what's greater than gematria words <laughs> show me something without words you can't do it <laughs> explain it to me without words you can't do it Email me without words and let me understand it. You can't do it. Throw a bunch of numbers. See what happens. You can't explain it without words. <laughs> These people are a trip. Agents of the devil. So Lucifer, he, he, he tells these Freemason, uh, magician, priest class Freemasons, a lie. And because it's got a little bit of truth... It's sad. They go so far, you know, they, they take their little little code or whatever you want to call it, and they don't line it up with the Bible, and then they go down the, uh, a path of destruction, a rabbit hole of destruction. Instead of backing up, comparing what they learn with the Bible and getting in the right path, they keep going down that path of destruction, and it gets worse. And, worse. and it's almost hard to rescue them because seen one get rescued she got rescued i'm pretty sure but still that path is a hard path to to pull somebody out of that path is like pulling teeth you know if somebody's down the rabbit hole of witchcraft gematria and delusions and legalism legalism might be worse than witchcraft because a person in legalism They're religious but lost, but they think they're saved because they go to church. They think they're saved because they do some kind of ritual. You must be born again. You must be born again. Let's look at the back of this Jeep real quick. I mean, look at this. He's got some neon. I just talked about neon, didn't I? And there they are. <laughs> See how it works, people. The holog I said neon. The eons of time is neon. <laughs> the neon lights are everywhere. The eons of time. And so the lights are, the signs are everywhere. There's the neon. The eons of time, right? You might say, well, how is eon and neon related? Because... What is neon lights? They're flashing lights. What is Neo? Neo is the one. Neo is Jesus. A type and shadow is Moses. Neo is a type and shadow of Christ. And so the eons of time, the Noahs, 
N-O-E, the Neos, the One, it's all related. The neon lights are everywhere, every age, every dispensation, every eon, the neon lights are shining. Look to Jesus. Moses pointed to Jesus, the One. Elijah pointed to Jesus. John the Baptist pointed to Jesus. All these, Abraham points to Jesus. Cain and Abel story, point, Abel pointed to Jesus. It all points to Jesus. The eons of time, the neon lights are everywhere. It all points to Jesus. Ella, come on, somebody needs to wake up. Somebody needs to wake up. No matter where you look, the light, the neon lights are everywhere because neon, Neo, the one, which is Jesus, who came down, split space time, came down in this place from eternity past, eternity future, eternity period, came down into time. He left you behind to be a witness. You're, the reason you're left behind is nothing. It's not to get rich. It's to be a witness, period. The only reason God left you behind, didn't rapture you up when you got saved, is to be a witness. That's it. You're in series after him, in sequence, in series. So the neon lights are everywhere, pointing back to Neo, the one. Noah points back to Jesus. Any kind of type, any type and shadow of a savior or somebody who pushes you through to the other side is a type of Jesus. Welcome to the real world. People. Every symbol, shape, color, word, phonics, everything points to the same story as the lamb slain for the foundation world. 